Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level LXL paper. Here we have a question. Um, it tells you in this question again this thing about um, relying on calculated technology. So any solving of equations or inequalities, you have to show your steps very, very clearly. So it says the equation four times in brackets p minus 2x equals 12 plus 15p over x plus p where x can't equal negative p. That might come in useful later on. We'll see. All right. Right now we can just see that this is basically what causes this to be undefined. So, um, but it might be we end up with an answer that we have to reject. So we keep that in our mind in from the beginning. Where p is a constant has two distinct real roots. Show that this inequality is true. So this statement here has two distinct real roots should bring or trigger in your mind after all the questions you've practiced um, that it's got something to do with the discriminant of a quadratic uh, equation okay so it seems like when we rearrange this equation here we should get some sort of quadratic form which then the discriminant for that okay when it has two distinct real roots the discriminant for that b squared minus 4ac will have to be greater than zero okay and um, so that's what we have to try to, um, you know, sort out. And when we when we sort that out, this is what should, we should end up with. So first step is for us to rearrange this equation. Um, so let's rearrange it, multiply by x plus p. So we have four pi, four times p minus two x times x plus p is equal to twelve plus fifteen p. So let's start by expanding this bracket. So we have. I'll keep the 4 outside first. So p times x, that's going to be px. And p times p is going to be plus p squared. And minus 2x times x is minus 2x squared. And minus 2x times p is minus 2px. p is just a number, so I'll write that first. And this side is already simplified as much as it can be. 12 plus 15p. Now I can, um, let's, is there any like terms here? Yes, you have a like terms here. So let's just combine them first. So here we're going to have, um, let's write it with the x squared terms first. Minus 2x squared, and you're going to have px minus 2px, which is minus, p, minus 1px, minus px. Okay, and then you're going to have uh, plus p squared equals 12 plus 15p. And now we can um, expand this, multiply by the force. So we have minus 8x squared minus 4px plus 4p squared is equal to 12 plus 15p and bring the all the terms on one side so the x squared term is minus 8x squared the x term is minus 4p and then you go 4px and all of this is a constant 4p squared minus 15p minus 12 all of this is a constant here all right, so if we were to write this in f or, or, or realize that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac has to be greater than zero, the reason why it has to be greater than zero, in case you're not sure, is that we know the quadratic formula is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And the, the part of the, the quadratic formula, which is called the discriminant, is this part which is underneath the square root sign. Why is it the discriminant? Because if this is... Um, negative there's no solutions if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero there'll be no solutions because the whole thing will be undefined square root of negative number so um, if b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero then this thing will become zero you'll end up with just minus b over 2a which means you'll have one solution which is sometimes called a repeated root the same solution twice repeated root and if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, this is where we have two separate distinct solutions. Two distinct solutions. Okay, And this is the case that we have to consider because it says it has two distinct real roots. So we've got to consider um, as there are, as we have two distinct um, solutions, therefore b squared minus 4ac has to be greater than zero so in our case our a here is negative 8 the coefficient of x squared our b here is minus 4p minus 4p our c here is the whole of this part here which is 4p squared minus 15p 
minus 12. All of that is a constant term. So b squared minus 4ac has to be greater than 0, in which case we're going to have minus 4p all squared, minus 4 times, minus 8 times all of this. 4p squared minus 15p minus 12. That one has to be greater than 0. So this is going to give you 16p squared minus, and you're going to have um, 32 times, I'll keep this bracket from being, um, in fact, that's going to be plus 32, minus 4 times minus 8, plus 32, times 4p squared minus 15p minus 12 is greater than 0. Now, for me to make this a bit easier, I can divide by 16, because that's like a factor of this whole term and this term. So that gives me p squared plus 2 times 4p squared minus 15p minus 12 is greater than 0. Now I can multiply this by 2. So I have, four p, I have p squared plus 8p squared um, minus 30p and minus 24 is greater than 0. So I end up with 9p squared, 9p squared minus 30p minus 24 is greater than 0. And we can see here we want to end up with this. And we can see that all of these terms are divisible by, by 3. So if you divide this by 3, you end up with 3p squared. If you divide this by 3, you end up with minus 10p. If you divide this by 3, you end up with minus 8. And that's greater than 0. And that shows exactly what we had to find. 3p squared minus 10p minus 10 is greater than 0. And we've shown that by this. So the key for this was... The discriminant has to be greater than zero. So first you rearrange this equation, make it into the form of a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and then take the discriminant of that and make that greater than zero, and you've got your inequality that you have to prove. So there's part A of the question. Now we're moving on to part B. It says, hence, using algebra, find the range of possible values of p. So we're going to take this, okay, um, inequality, and we're going to solve this inequality. Now, how do we solve an inequality like this? Okay, um, this inequality represents the value of the discriminant of that. Okay, so we can solve this quadratic inequality by first of all thinking about um, what it looks like. Okay, so we see that this is a quadratic and it has a minimum. It will look something like this. So we want to see where does this quadratic equal zero, and then we can decide when it will be above zero and when it will be below zero. So where does it, where does it uh, hit zero? Let's first of all find where it hits zero. So 3p squared minus 10p minus 8 equals zero. So let's find the places where it hits zero. So let's solve this equation first. Okay, we have to split the middle term. I'm going to do this with my little window method. So 3p squared and minus 8. When you multiply them, you get minus 24p squared. Okay, and when you add them, you get minus 10p. So the product is minus 24p squared. The sum is minus 10p. All right. So now, what do we do to solve this problem? Well, we do the following. Two numbers, minus 10 and 12. Let's see. I think, is it 10 times... Um, no, 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 no. Not 10 times anything. 24. 12 times 2 is the one. 12 times 2. 12 times 2 gives you... 24 and when you find the difference between them it's going to be 10 so you're going to have minus 12p and plus 2p all right those multiply to give you minus 24p squared and they add to give you minus 10p so we can take out the common factor we can do it from any i'll do it from this column first so 3 and p is common so i'll put 3p 3p times p is 3p squared 3p times minus 4 is minus 12p and p times plus 2 is 2p so we end up with 3p plus 2 times p minus 4 equals 0. Now, when you expand this just to make sure, 3p squared minus 12p plus 2p, that's correct, minus 8. So we can say 3p plus 2 equals 0 and p minus 4 equals 0. So p is equal to minus 2 thirds and p is equal to 4. Those are the two uh, places where this hits 0. So you've got 4 and minus two thirds. That's what it, this, this is going to hit zero. Okay, oops, the other way around. What am I doing? <laughs> four is going to be bigger, of course. All right, so you're going to have four over here 
and minus two thirds. And of course, if you were to draw your y-axis, um, I'll just do it by, by hand, the y-axis would be somewhere over here. Okay, so we can see that this, this, this represents a value of p, okay, which is the discriminant, okay, and um, sorry, this, this represents the value of p, and this represents the value of the discriminant. And you can see the discriminant value is less than zero when p is minus two thirds, between minus two thirds and four, it's less than zero. And it's greater than zero when p is greater than four, and when p is less than minus two thirds. So we can see that that's when the, the value of the discriminant, which this represent, is positive. Okay. So when we have p-values which are less than minus two-thirds, this expression which represents the discriminant will be greater than zero. And when we have p-values which are greater than four also, it will be um, the same case. So the range of possible values of p are when p is less than minus two-thirds or when p is greater than four. Is there anything that we need to get out? X cannot be minus P. Okay, so yeah, that's fine. That's that's fine. That the reason why they have this here is because if you put minus P over minus P over here, this becomes zero. That's all. Okay, so there's no no problem with that. And that is the answer to this question. Okay, so that is basically um, part B done. Okay, so when you have a quadratic inequality, you know, picturing what's happening is very important it helps you to decide you know whether where you know it's greater than zero and less than zero so this line represents the discriminant okay the value of the discriminant when the when the curve is above the p axis like this the discriminant will be positive when it's below the p axis like this these values those values of p will give you a negative discriminant and we're looking for where the discriminant is greater than zero so there's question six done other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this section over here. Other questions from the topic of, um, I guess this is to do with quadratics. Um, it's all to do with quadratics, including quadratic inequalities. You can find that in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. And the video here will tell you how to use my channel to find things that you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.